The Triple Crown might be in our rear view mirror, but the Road to the Breeders' Cup is right in front of us. On behalf of America's Best Racing, Joe Christopher, joined by Bram Weinstein. And Bram, Triple Crown winner, American Pharaoh. That has a nice ring to it. Last time it happened, I was five. So it was awesome to see it, you know, and I was lucky enough to be there. So I got to witness it. So it's one of those life is complete moments here because you actually got to witness that happening. So that was awesome. And I don't want to hear anyone else say he didn't deserve it any longer. I, I know this wasn't the most crowded field of three-year-olds. I get it. But he came out of the 17 post to win the Derby. He came out of the rail at the Preakness. It never happened. And, of course, the skies opened up right before the race started. And he goes wire to wire at the Belmont. I mean, give me a break. I, if anyone has ever deserved it, it was that particular horse. Now, American Pharaoh has been beating up on three-year-olds. He won the Triple Crown. But – the next task at hand is eventually facing older horses and the big one at the end of the year, the Breeders' Cup Classic. More on that in just a little bit as the road to the Breeders' Cup Classic does kind of kickstart with the Stephen Foster, a win in your in race on Saturday night at Churchill Downs. Hall of Fame trainers Bob Baffert, Bill Mott, and Todd Pletcher all involved in this one. And of the three, only Mott has won this race. He won it in 2012 with Ron the Greek. Star-studded field of seven going postward here, Bram. And Bob Baffert's got two of them. He's got Hopportunity and Cat Burglar. Mott has Leah coming in from the Dubai World Cup. And Commissioner for Todd Pletcher. There's several others with a chance as well. What are your initial thoughts on the field for the Foster? You know, I'm amazed that we have all these Hall of Fame traders. I really would have picked Pletcher to be the Triple Crown winner. Based on all the success that he's had over the most recent years, it just hasn't happened for him. But Baffert's all-world. He's great. He's fantastic. Deserving clearly with it. But I find it odd that we're sitting here on this date. We're not talking about Todd Pletcher was the Triple Crown winning trainer. All of them have, obviously, a clear opportunity to win this race with their horses. I like opportunity personally. I mean, I know he's been off since February, but last time he was there, he won. I don't know where you are on workouts. I don't know how you feel about workouts. His last workout was really, really sharp. So I like opportunity here. Yeah, there was a question whether or not opportunity was going to run in the Foster, and it's kind of funny. He's two stalls down from American Pharaoh, and with all the attention American Pharaoh was getting, you'd see opportunity looking over from his stall saying, Hey, what about me? So maybe he's got a little extra motivation in the Foster to prove that uh, he's the man, too. What do you feel about Commissioner? I mean, he's hit his groove his last two. I mean, clearly he's got a shot here, but he only won two of his first ten, so maybe it's he's a late bloomer. He's finally coming around, and he's that type of contender. I, I, I guess he's, he feels like a favorite here if the other two aren't as sharp as they normally are, but... He's an odd one to pick. Is this a bounce back one? Is this a bounce up one? Is he just going to keep getting better? It's hard to tell. Yeah, at least Commissioner's got the recency side uh, factor on his side because Lee hasn't run since the World Cup. Opportunity's been off a few months, and Commissioner's won his last two races in impressive fashion. So maybe later in the year he won't be as good as Lee or he won't be as good as Opportunity. But on Saturday night he may be more fit and more ready to go, so that remains to be seen. I think you got to give a major consideration. But, Brent, what do you think about the Dubai World Cup? We saw Prince Bishop win that race. California Chrome was second. More on him later. Lee ran a good third, but he's coming back from halfway around the world. Does that bother you at all that uh, that he raced in Dubai just a couple of months ago? Yeah, it does. I mean, like, that seems to never work out for anybody. I don't, I don't know particularly why. I, it, when they come over here and race in our big races, it never works out for them. And then when we send ours over there, it seems very rare that it ends up working out. If that horse does what he did a year ago, no one can beat him, clearly. It's like, that's all world type of stuff. That said, I don't know what happened over there, and he comes back here, and so suddenly there's this giant question mark around him. So I think he's deserving of being the morning line favorite, but that's only partially based on what he did a year ago, and a year ago was a long time ago. Well, Bram, we look at these races not only as fans, but as betters. So you look at it and say, okay, well, here's your most likely winner, but you also have to look at it from a value perspective. So in the Stephen Foster, who do you think has the best chance to win? And then who is your value play? A horse that you may zero in on if the price is right. I mean, I think, like, uh, this is a leap of faith because it's been a couple months, but I like opportunity. Um, he won here last time he was there. I like. I don't know what it is about this. I don't normally hinge on workouts, but for some reason that one stuck out to me. I like him in this. It's a short field, and if Lee isn't Lee, then I think he's probably got the best chance to win. So I, I like him. 
And as far as the value play goes, I'm going to stick with a little bit of the Baffert Espinosa magic, and I'm going to take Cat Burglar here. I, I think he's going to be 10 to 1 or higher. I, there clearly are three horses that you can choose and feel very confident about going in. So you're going to get a number of one of these other ones, and they're all very strong. I'm going to go with the magic horse and stick with the Baffert magic and take Cat Burglar. Yeah, I can't argue with you there. If somebody's going to steal it, maybe it could be the cat burglar. But I'll go with Lee here. I think that Lee maybe has a class edge. I see quite a bit of speed in the race. I think he'll be able to sit, stalk, and pounce and perhaps get the job done in the foster. And if it rains, he was really good on an off track here at Churchill Downs in the past. For me, the long shot is Noble Bird. This is a horse that really seems to be progressive. He just missed against Prontonico the last time he ran at Churchill Downs on Kentucky Derby weekend, and he's headed in the right direction, and he, too, will be a price. So, Bram, the foster is very significant in the classic division. We've talked about some of the best older horses in the country, but when all is said and done at the end of the year, you're going to see the star three-year-olds against the older horses in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Let's take a look at the top ten list that you and I comprised in. There's no surprise. Both of us have number one American Pharaoh. Well, I mean, it's him and everybody else. I mean, like, how could you not pick him? So, and clearly it's him and everyone else. And I have a, a clearly a recency bias because my number two is firing line based on his performance at the Kentucky Derby. And I, I know it happened at the Preakness, but I'm, I'm willing to overlook that. He was the only horse of that class with American Pharaoh. And then I've got frosted at number three because of the finishes that he had at the Belmont and the Preakness. And I, I'm like wavering whether that was really the right thing to do because I have a tremendous amount of respect for Tonalist and Byron and Lee maybe we'll see this weekend. But I guess I have this a bit of a recency bias with what I've seen from those particular ones over recent weeks. But American Pharaoh, of course, clearly is easy choice at number one. And there's some question marks in our top 10 list. We've got shared belief on there. We're not even sure we're going to see him the rest of 2015. I've got honor code off of the Met Mile win, but we're not sure he wants to run a mile and an eighth, let alone a mile and a quarter. And then, Bram, your thoughts on California Chrome. He runs in the Dubai World Cup. Now he's going to Europe to race on the turf, maybe eventually the Arlington Million, and then the Breeders' Cup Classic. Kind of a strange road to get back to Keeneland for the biggest race of them all here in America. Yeah, he um, he's an interesting one. He made my list. I mean, I put him in at, at nine. I mean, that, that was weird to say, like, he made my list. Like, he clearly should be considered that way. I, I don't know how I feel about him. You know, like, suddenly he's racing on turf, and he's racing here, and he's racing there, and it seems like they're just trying to figure out a way to get him back into the form that he was in and what surface is going to work for him and what distance is going to work for him. So um, he's a leap of faith, too. He's a bit of, okay, I know what he's done in the past, and if he does that in the past again, then he's going to be extremely formidable, but I just don't necessarily believe it. I need to see it. Don't forget the Road to the Breeders' Cup, the Challenge Series on NBCSN, win and you're in Saturday, June the 13th. The Stephen Foster in the Classic Division, along with the Fleur de Lee in the Distas Division, and American Pharaoh will, will be parading live on the racetrack at Churchill Downs. That'll all be a part of the broadcast, uh, broadcast from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time on NBCSN. For Bram Weinstein, I'm Joe Christofek, and this is a look at the Classic Division moving forward. Enjoy it. on their way to the roar of the crowd. What a memorable Breeders' Cup Classic. It's a race for the ages.